Hello everyone and welcome back to Coded by Jade. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to make a simple to-do list with a Pomodoro timer using Python and GUI Zero. Before starting this tutorial, you should be familiar with GUI Zero documentation as well as how procedures and classes work in Python. So, the first thing to do of course is to import GUI Zero and set up a simple app. And what this does is it basically creates a window for the app to run. As you can see here, this is the app that it creates. Next, we want to actually fill the app with widgets. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the title of the app, which is basically be, going to be the label of the app. And this is going to be, of course, to do list. So to do that, create a text widget with app as its master and a text to do list. And then just showing how that works. So yeah, as you can see here, just a simple text to do list. Next, we're going to set up both how to enter the uh, data into the to do list and how to view the data. So we're going to create two boxes of that, an entry box and an activity box, which is going to be full of the activities that um, the user may wish to do. So creating two boxes. And this isn't actually going to show anything on the window for now. So we're going to go right into the next step. So first I'm going to fill the entry box and what you want to do first is find a way to enter the text. So for the entry text would be the text box for entry and its master will be entry box and we're going to put that to the left and a line left basically means that there's going to be on the left hand side of the box. And we want to do this because at the right hand side, we want to add a space for the user to actually actually enter what they wish to do in the list. So just going to make the this widget about a length of um, width, sorry, of 50. And next, we're going to want to make an entry button so the user can actually add this activity to the to do list. And that's with a push button. And text will just be like add to add it to the list. And the command is going to eventually be to add activity. The activity being the value of the entry text. And we're going to align that to the right. Have you seen here? I've used the lambda function for the command, and um, I'm not quite exactly sure how this works but I know that as the text isn't full yet we don't want to immediately send this command to whatever function and the function doesn't even exist yet we're going to do it at a later stage but this just prevents the, the function from running itself so just to prevent crashing I'm just going to create a boiler template of the function so add activity and this is going to be activity and we're just going to pass that for now. So just to show you what this looks like. So as you can see with the entry box, what we've done is we've created a space for the user to enter the, the whatever activity they want to do and a button to add. And this has no functionality yet as we've used a pass function, but we're going to add the functionality after we've added the activity section. So that being said, the activities section is going to be underneath the activity box. And first, what we're going to do is set the height and width of the activity box because what we want to do is differentiate between where to enter the entry 
of the activity and to actually view the activity. So I'm just going to add some aesthetic features, which such as the width and the height for the box. And we're going to set the background as to white. Let's reload that. There we go. So as you can see, you can see exactly where the activities will be as this will be separated with white. At the end, I'm going to show you a full app of how I've customized it myself. And I'm going to leave this open to interpretation for you to be able to customize it yourself to really personalize the to-do list for you. So now that we've got that running, we can start to focus on actually adding activities to the activity box. So to do this, I'm going to make use of a class. And the reason I want to use classes is that I want each activity to be an object so that it's easy to manipulate and add or delete certain activities from the to-do list. So the class is going to be a to-do list widget. And an object is going to come out of it. And first we're going to construct the class. So obviously um, it has to refer to itself. It's going to take in a description of what the activity is and this is short for description. And of course it needs to know the window to push this cl um, class widget to. So just some attributes. So the description is going to be whatever the users set the description to be. And the widget space, by widget space I'm referring to the box of which the widget will be filled in. And I'm using a box for each widget so that you can see both the activity and to the left and a checkbox to the right to check which activities you have and you haven't done. So the widget description. will of course be a text referring to the widget space and that text will be the description in fact to be honest you don't really need this right here so just gonna set the text to the description and as I said, we're going to have the description to the left and the checkbox to the right. So we're going to align that to the left. And then we're going to check if the widget has actually been completed. So the, if the activity is actually being completed using the checkbox referring to the widget space. And align that to the right. And next, I'm going to refer to something that we're going to complete a little later. But what's going to happen with this to-do list is that as soon as the user turns on um, that they've completed an activity, the activity will be automatically deleted from the list. And to do this, we're going to have to listen out for if the user has clicked the checkbox. So the program will have an event that checks whether the activity has been completed or not. So to do that, we've got widget space. And it's going to repeat every 200 milliseconds and it's going to destroy the widget. And this of course will be a function. So Okay, so now what, so what this does is that it's going to create the widget, create the description of the widget and create the, um, the checkbox to, for the user to check whether or not they've done the widget. And it's going to push that into the widget space box, which is inside the activity box. So the next thing to do is to fill in the add activity widget. So to do that, deleting this pass function and we're going to be saying a variable as new activity 
is equal to the creating a to-do list widget, so the new activity is an object. The activity, which is the entry text value, and assign this to the activity box. Therefore, showing that the widget space is inside the activity box because this is sent to here. So if I was to run that now, you can see that entering any value, so do homework, for example, and this widget appears in the activity box. And both do homework and that checkbox itself is an object and you can click on and off. And it doesn't delete for now because we haven't added functionality to the destroy widget um, procedure, but we eventually will. But as you can see, this works and it works for anything. So I don't know, do the dishes, for example. And that is added to the activity box. Okay, so now let's actually destroy each widget if the activity is done. So to do that, what we want to do is we're going to try to see if the self dot if widget done dot value and widget done dot value basically checks if the checkbox is ticked or not and is boolean. So if it's unticked, it'll be zero, but we're checking if the activity has been completed and therefore ticked, which is one. And if that value is true, then we're going to delete the whole widget. And I'm using the try and accept just to avoid any cr crashing of the program. So, so if it, in the event that I will crash, do nothing rather than attempting to do something. So therefore, now if we had the same widget, so do homework, do the dishes. If we click the boxes, they delete. And just to show you that this works, no matter what order the box is in, so do the dishes, do homework, revise for test. And if we go about in any order, they all delete as you add that. So now we have perfected getting a simple to-do list working. The next thing we're going to do is add a Pomodoro timer section to this to-do list. So to add a Pomodoro timer, we're going to create a button that allows the user to navigate to the Pomodoro timer window. And to do that within the app, we're going to create a push button that directs the user to that window. So Pomodoro timer. It's must to be an app. The text be in Pomodoro timer. And this is going to open a new window only if the user has clicked the um, button, hence the lambda function. Now we're going to fill in the start timer function. So at the top, just going to label this off actually. So this will be the to-do list functionality. And next, this will be the Pomodoro timer functionality. Functionality. So what we want to do is the function we labeled it start timer. And this is the window being passed in. The window, of course, being the app. And we're going to set up a window for the timer. Oh, window would be in the window, not the app. Because the app is the actual argument rather than the parameter. And I'm just going to set the width and height of the timer. Because we don't want it to be a whole screen because it's just counting down. And 
And of course, for Pomodoro timer, it'll be 25 minutes. So we're going to set the initial time left to be 25. And we're going to add a title to the window. The title will be in Pomodoro timer. And of course, I'll put the actual time left to the screen to do that. Just creating a, another text widget with master B and POM window, setting the text to current time left. And of course we want this to count down. So to do this, the timer widget is going to update every minute. To do that, says 60,000 milliseconds and the function will be to reduce the time and for the new function reduce time we're going to want to set the timer variable to global so that this function has access it's no longer a local variable it's now come a global variable for reduce time function to access well procedure more like so just to confirm I know this is probably not needed, but I just like to know which variables have been declared global from each um, procedure. So what you're going to do is you're going to check that it's greater than zero, because of course we don't want it to count down into negative figures. We want it to just stop at zero. So convert it back to an integer. if it's greater than zero then the timer value will be decremented and else we know that the timer value is up So if we run the code, So as you can see, that was the timer effectively counting down. And that's it for this tutorial. I've shown you how to make a simple to-do list. And I've shown you how to create a Pomodoro timer, which actually counts down. Okay, just by reference, this is what I mean by customizing the app according to your tastes, just to make the GUI look a bit better than gray and white. So what I've done is I've done kind of bl dark and light blush color, and this theme's reciprocated across everything, and just a um, round the font. So to do this, all you have to do is change the colors, and GUI Zero takes RGB, hex, and basic um, text, normal colors like white and red and green. Thanks for watching, and I hope you tune into my next video. Bye.